Hi, my name is Andy Park. Welcome back to this channel. In this video, I'll share seven of my favorite tips for Microsoft Outlook. These are not the conventional top tips that you might find in other Outlook tutorials. I've curated a list of practical features that I personally use on a regular basis. So unless you're a really advanced user, you should discover at least one or two new tips in this video. By the way, I'm saving my favorite advanced tip till the end, so be sure to stick around for that. Tip number one, message recall. Have you ever sent an email where as soon as you hit send, you immediately realize you made a mistake? Outlook has a feature that lets us recall the message that we just sent. We can access it by opening up the sent email. And if the ribbon tabs are not showing, click on this icon, go to the actions command in the move group and select recall this message. We'll receive an email message back indicating whether the recall was successful. We'll receive this message for each recipient in our email distribution. And the success of the recall will depend on the recipient's email client settings and whether the recipients have opened their message or not. So the quicker we can do this after sending the email, the better. Now to be clear, successfully recalling a message doesn't mean that the recipient is completely unaware that we sent the original message. They'll be notified that we recall the message and that the message has been deleted. Tip number two, set up automatic send delay. If you want to avoid the message recall panic altogether, we can set up automatic email send delay. I'm pretty savvy with the keyboard shortcuts in Outlook and use them heavily. And when I'm in the zone, I fly through my email messages. But because of this, occasionally I'll make a mistake and use the wrong shortcut combination like control enter and send the email prematurely. Rather than panicking and scrambling to recall the message, I've set up a two minute delay for my email so that every single email that I send will actually sit in my outbox for two minutes before being released. From the home ribbon, go to rules, then select manage rules and alerts. Click new rule. From the third section here, choose apply rule on messages I send. Hit next. Leave all the checkboxes blank here as we want this rule to apply to all emails that we send. Hit yes to confirm. And then for action, choose defer delivery by a number of minutes. And if we click on this link, we can set how many minutes we want to delay the email send. I find that two minutes works for me best, but you can choose whatever you like. We don't need to set any exceptions, so we'll leave all the boxes unchecked and hit next. And we can name this two minute delay, make sure that turn on this rule is checked and hit finish. We get a message indicating that this rule will only work on email that we send from our desktop client. If we're using Outlook on the web or using our mobile device, the email will be sent without the delay. Hit okay and we're all set. Now let's send the test email and see if this works. And sure enough, the email is sitting in our outbox waiting to be sent. Tip number three, delay delivery. This is not to be confused with the previous tip where we set up the automatic two minute delay. Sometimes, especially on evenings and weekends when I'm catching up on work, I draft a lot of emails. I don't want to send those emails and encroach on my team's personal time. In that case, I set up a delay delivery and specify a future time like the next business day. This way I can still check things off on my end without bothering my colleagues until they're clocked in for work. Simply go to the Options tab and select Delay Delivery. Make sure the Do Not Deliver Before box is checked and select the appropriate date and time, then close. Same as before, the message will remain in our outbox and will be sent at the set time. Before we move on to the next tip, if you're enjoying this video so far and find these tips helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. This will help the YouTube algorithm and help more people discover this video. Okay, tip number four. This one is simple, but it's something that I use often. When I create a table in Outlook, or even when I copy tables over from Excel or OneNote, the column width is usually not what I want them to be. Rather than trying to adjust them manually, we can simply right click on the table move handle and select auto fit to content. Let's do that again with a table copy from Excel. We can also choose fit to the window or specify the exact width if you want to. Tip number five, create a group contact. If you send emails to the same group of colleagues all the time, 
you can set up a group contact so that you don't have to individually enter your colleagues' names each time you send an email. Go to the People tab, then from the Home ribbon, select New Contact Group. Don't confuse this with the new group, which will create a new Office 365 group associated with Team SharePoint site. Here we can give it a name for the contact and add members. I manage a lot of recurring meetings where I have to send agendas and recaps, so I set up a contact group for each recurring meeting. For example, for the Retail Ops meeting, I'll create a group name, Retail Ops Meeting Group, and add the appropriate members. This way, when I have to send an agenda or a recap, I can just type this in the To field. And if you want to confirm who belongs to this group, you can just click on the plus sign. And what I find really helpful is that I can actively manage the attendees directly on this contact list. If someone leaves a group or a new person joins, I can make changes to the contact group once and not have to think about it every time I send an email to the group. Tip number six, show us conversations. We have our standard view with all email messages. With the standard view, the emails are sorted descending by the receive date. So the most recent email shows up on top. Now, suppose we're engaged in an active email discussion on a topic and there are many emails on this single topic over the course of a month. With the standard view, these emails would be scattered throughout our inbox depending on the date and the time we receive the individual emails. But if we simply click on this checkbox for show us conversations, the emails with the same subject will get grouped and nested together regardless of when they were received. By the way, I'm sorry that all these messages are blurred out. But this triangle indicates that all messages with the same subject have been grouped together. And when we click on it to expand, it'll show the nesting of individual messages sorted with the newer messages on top. So the topmost email will include all previous messages in the conversation thread. So that's the only one we'd need to open. We don't have to open every individual email. Tip number seven, change your view setting. Let's say you've just returned from a week-long vacation where you were completely offline and didn't check any of your emails. And good for you, by the way. But now it's your first day back and you have a million emails and don't know where to start. If you're like most people, you just start from the top with the most recent emails and pray that you can get through all of the emails eventually. There's a better way. Go to View Settings, Filter, then click on Where I Am the only person on the to line. You can even specify additional filters like email received in the last seven days. If the email was addressed to you only, presumably you're the only person who can act on that email, which means all of the responsibility pertaining to whatever request or info that is in that email solely rests with you. That's a lot of pressure. These are the emails that you want to address first to ensure nothing falls through the cracks. Then you can expand to show emails where you're on the to line, but alongside other people, somewhat of a less pressure since you're sharing the responsibility with others. And lastly, you can tackle those where you are CC'd. Now, if you think you'll be using this view regularly, whether you're returning from vacation or not, you can simply go to change view and save the current view as a new view. Let's name it and choose visible only to me. Now we can see this view has been saved and we can easily toggle between this and our normal view. There's a lot we can do to customize our view in this view setting. For example, we can filter the view to show only the emails that we receive from our internal team members by entering in their names. Sometimes I like to fake the feeling of inbox zero and just show emails received today so that I can focus and not be overwhelmed and distracted by all of the old messages. Well, as you can see, I have no emails received today as it's Saturday. Okay, so those are my favorite seven tips for Outlook. If you enjoyed this video and learned something here today, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks and bye for now.